about the attacks that are happening on migrant communities. Let's remember each and every one of their front pages for year upon year, yeah. targeting the migrant community, yeah. targeting the black community. Yeah. Friends, we've been here before. I lived through the 1970s and 80s. I lived through when politicians would play the race card. I lived through when Margaret Thatcher stood in that building over there and she talked about people, the British people, being swamped by people of an alien culture. We lived through, even more recently, a mayoral election where the race card was being played by the Tory party. We know that that legitimises popular racism on the street and that we, as the black community, pay for it with the, our blood on the streets. I've been to countless funerals of people, young and old, who were murdered in racist murders across this country. Of Kuldeep Singh Sethan, of actor Ali Big, of Roland Adams, of Stephen Lawrence, of Joy Gardner. So many names that have been forgotten. But those names, those lies were taken, not just by the fascists, because but because politicians legitimise popular racism. I lived through a time where our communities were constantly living under the fear of racist attack. And so we have lots of lessons to learn. And you know what the first lesson is? That we have to reject politicians who say that by talking about immigration, we take the sting out of racism. No, you don't. You popularise it. You legitimise it. We lived through when the Labour Party and the Labour government said exactly this when it brought in the Commonwealth and Immigration Act. I lived through a time where at Heathrow Airport, young Asian women coming into this country were subject to virginity tests to show that they were pure before they could enter. When families were divided, that didn't take the sting out of the fascists or the racists. What did it do? Emboldened them. Give them more power, that's right. Absolutely. Emboldened them. And what we've got to do is remember, when you echo their narrative, you not only legitimise them, you weaken us, you weaken our own movement, you weaken the values of our own movement. So, friends, yes, Brexit didn't create racism, but it has legitimised it, as we can see by the real lived experiences of communities up and down this country. So for us as black people and us as black communities, we have always said, we wear our passports on our faces. Yeah. And when people talk about immigration and people talk about the other, that's who they mean. They mean us. So, one slogan we had in the 1970s and the 80s, which I think is really relevant again now, was a slogan that said, here to stay, but also here to fight. Yeah. But friends, what that means is that the progressive movement can't leave communities under attack to just defend themselves. So what we mean, what we need now, is a movement that simply doesn't say we're not racist, but says we're actively anti-racist. Yeah. And that means solidarity with those on the front line of attack. It means solidarity with migrants and refugees in detention camps, both here and in Calais, in Greece. But it also means we need to build a progressive movement, a movement that understands our connection between what happens here and locally to what happens globally and as we heard from our sister from Syria it means a movement that its core says it's people power and solidarity that will see us through whose beating heart must be justice Woo! friends we not only have to make another Europe possible we have to make another Britain a reality yeah. an anti-racist Britain yeah. so friends Yes, we as a community have a right to live free from attack. But we also have a right to live a life, a life of dignity. No matter what part of the world you're from, 
a right to life, a right to dignity, and a right to justice and equality. Woo!